every single country around the world has at least one invasive species, with most countries spending millions or even billions to try and eradicate them. A non-native species doesn't have to be large or imposing to cause massive damage to an ecosystem, but in today's video I'll be focusing on the largest invasive species in the world. I'll be ranking each of the seven continents by the largest invasive species that can be found there, but as this is quite a complicated topic, there are a few rules to go over. I'll be judging the animals based on their heaviest weights in the wild, and I won't be including livestock or domesticated animals. To be featured, the animal also has to be clearly invasive, as some non-native animals are classed as introduced as they have little effect on the ecosystem, and others are classed as naturalised as they've been in the area for many years and have become a part of the ecosystem, even though they aren't indigenous. This has also been an incredibly hard video to research, as it's hard to find examples of every single invasive animal on a continent, so if you feel like there are any large animals that I haven't mentioned, then let me know down below. In this video we'll be travelling around the world taking a look at a wide range of different animals, and we'll start off in the driest and windiest continent in the world. It shouldn't really be a surprise that we're starting off in Antarctica first, as it's one of the hardest places for any organism to establish themselves. You need to have certain adaptations to be able to deal with the freezing temperatures, and most animals would quickly starve. There aren't enough plants here year round for herbivores, and unless you target penguins, seals, krill or fish, there's little prey here too. The only large animals that could really become invasive here are animals that are native to the Arctic, but it's extremely unrealistic to suggest that they'd be capable and willing to make the long journey south. Polar bears could become a real problem if they managed to make the long trip down to Antarctica, but there would be a lot of explaining to do if one of these apex predators suddenly showed up. On the islands surrounding Antarctica there have been a few invasive species outbreaks, but it's still debated if these islands should be considered part of Antarctica or not. Famously, the South Georgia Islands had an invasive rat problem, and these rodents were threatening the native bird populations. After a massive and very difficult eradication project, South Georgia was declared rodent-free in 2018, and this has helped many of the native birds to bounce back. On mainland Antarctica, the only real invasive species are small insects, but it's possible that some larger organisms could invade in the future due to rising temperatures. One of the only ways that non-native species can make their way to Antarctica is on tourist and fishing vessels, and it's possible that the hitchhikers on these ships could establish themselves in the coming years. Rats and mice would really struggle, but it's possible that small populations could survive around research stations, and certain crabs, mussels and barnacles could survive in its increasingly warming waters. Spider crabs have been invading Antarctic waters in recent years, and some experts believe that this will have massive negative effects on the native marine species. This means that the spider crabs would definitely qualify as an invasive species, but it's possible that these crustaceans are actually native. It's believed that they left Antarctic waters millions of years ago, but they are currently returning due to the warmer temperatures. For this reason, they can't really be classed as invasive, so it seems as though the only real invasive species on Antarctica are small insects. This means that Antarctica comes in at a sorry 7th place, but I guess being further down on this list is really a good thing. Africa is home to many competitive and brutal ecosystems, which is part of the reason why it has a relatively small amount of invasive species compared to other continents. Whether you're a predator or a herbivore, you have to compete with true giants and highly specialised animals, and large parts of the continent are also uninhabitable for most organisms. Even though Africa's freshwaters are extremely dangerous with many crocodiles, hippos and predatory fish inhabiting them, some non-native fish have had some success here. Many different sport fish have been introduced over the years for fishing purposes, with many bass, carp and catfish establishing themselves here. On land, most invasive mammals come in the form of domesticated animals and rodents, but there are a few large mammals that have been able to deal with all of the threats. The fallow deer is native to Eurasia, but today it's been introduced into many countries around the world. We have been introducing deer into different parts of the world for hundreds of years, and this is mostly for the purpose of sport hunting or food. 
Sailors would often introduce deer onto islands along trading routes so that they could harvest them as they travelled through, and colonisers would also introduce them so that they could hunt the same animals that they're used to back home. I've always thought that the latter is a very strange reason to introduce an animal, as you'd assume that one of the most interesting things about moving halfway around the world is that there are new animals and plants that surround you, but instead many of the settlers just introduced animals from back home. Fallow deer were introduced into South Africa in the early 1800s by the British, and this was originally for hunting purposes. Over the centuries, they have spread and become established in a few different regions, and this is bad news for the native grazers and the native plants. They've been so successful in some regions that there have been culls to try and control their population, and it doesn't look like they're going anywhere anytime soon. There are a few other invasive deer species across Africa such as the Chital and the Sika deer, but the European fallow deer is the largest. An extremely large fallow deer buck can weigh in at 150 kilograms, and this means that Africa is fit for sixth place. Asia is the largest continent in the world, but surprisingly it doesn't have as many invasive species as you might think. Many Asian countries have invasive species that come from other parts of Asia, so it doesn't really make sense to include these animals in this video. The ecosystems that are usually more vulnerable to invaders are island ecosystems, and Asia's islands are no exception to this. Japan has many invaders that come from North America, including predatory fish, reptiles, rodents, and raccoons. On the Asian mainland, the landscapes vary greatly, but in most ecosystems there is a healthy amount of competition and apex predators. In some parts of Asia, you'll find giant brown bears and wolves. In others, you'll find lions and tigers. And on some of its islands, you'll find giant reptiles that reign supreme. On some parts of the continent, animals also have to deal with human encroachment and poaching threats. So if you want to survive here, you need to be very hardy. This is why there aren't many giant land animals that are invasive in the region, but in the water there are some giants that manage to survive here. The Arapaima is one of the largest freshwater fish in the world, and it's native to the Amazon and Essequibo basins of South America. These bony tongue fish are truly prehistoric, with some Arapaima fossils found in Colombia dating back 23 million years. One of the reasons that they have been able to survive for this long mostly unchanged is because they are extremely adaptable, and they have a few adaptations that help them to survive in a variety of different habitats. These fish are able to breathe atmospheric oxygen, and this means that they can survive and hunt in waters where other fish would perish. They are also extremely muscular and bony fish, meaning that only the largest and most formidable aquatic predators can target them. I think it's safe to say that the laws regarding invasive species are pretty lax in some parts of Asia, as these fish have been imported into many Asian countries for aquaculture purposes. It's possible to visit fisheries that stock giant fish from around the world, and although it may seem easy at first, stopping these fish from escaping into the wild is surprisingly difficult. Flash floods and torrential rains are relatively common in tropical Asia, and this leads to the giant tropical fish in these fisheries escaping into the wild. Because the native fish aren't used to dealing with the arapaima, and because they are such efficient hunters, the native fish are easy prey, and they have negative effects on the native freshwater ecosystems by competing with and preying on native fish. The arapaima is capable of reaching weights of around 200 kilograms, meaning that Asia slots in at a close number 5. For hundreds of years, Europeans have been travelling around the world introducing non-native animals, but every now and again they would bring plants and animals home with them. This is part of the reason why Europe has so many invasive plants and animals today, but it also has plenty of animals that have become naturalised. In places such as the UK, there are many non-native deer, but some of them have been in the region for hundreds of years, and some of them were once native but had gone extinct. Today, there are many tropical birds that can be found in and around some of Europe's cities, and there are many fish and crustaceans that have arrived from over the pond in North America. To find some of the largest invasive species on the continent, you'll have to head over to Scandinavia, as there are two American invaders that have been very successful here. The North American beaver has a very healthy population in Finland, and today they even outnumber the native beavers in the country. 
Their introduction into Europe was essentially done by accident, because at one point in time, the European beaver and the North American beaver were considered to be the same species. When the Eurasian beaver was struggling in Finland, beavers from North America were introduced, and they multiplied at an astonishing rate. I've covered this story in more detail in another video, so I'll leave that linked in the description below. In the early 20th century, white-tailed deer were also introduced into the country, and even though the odds were stacked against them, there were more than 100,000 of them in the country in 2021. I also covered this story in the same video I mentioned, so I'll keep it brief, but originally only five deer were introduced. The original population struggled at first and it didn't look like they were going to survive, and eventually some of the deer escaped from captivity and the rest were released. Altogether, three does and three bucks found their way into the wild, and a decade later, another six deer were introduced. It's incredible that they managed to survive in the first place, but over the decades, 12 white-tailed deer turned into over 100,000. Their numbers have purposely been reduced through hunting in recent years, but the white-tailed deer is still the largest invasive species in Europe. The largest male bucks can reach weights of around 220 kilograms, meaning that Europe slots in at number four. North America is home to a few different hotspots where invasive species thrive, with Florida being the most famous and obvious example. This is where you can find a variety of giant reptiles that really shouldn't be here, such as pythons, caiman, tegu, monitors, and even Nile crocodiles. It was big news when Nile crocodiles were found in the Everglades back in 2016, but since then there has been little evidence to suggest that there are any more out there. I was going to include the Nile crocodile as the largest invasive species in North America, but as there hasn't been any concrete evidence to suggest that there are still some out there, it doesn't seem appropriate to include them. Many other aquatic invaders also enjoy life in Floridian waters, such as the aforementioned arapaima and green anacondas. Just like the Nile crocodile, reports of these animals in Florida are few and far between, but they have definitely been here in the past. Across the northern parts of North America, wild boar and boar-pig hybrids cause massive problems, with the native predators being unable to deal with the sheer numbers of them. The largest invasive species in North America isn't a giant predatory reptile or a rampaging boar, as instead it's a herd animal from southern Africa. The Gemsbok is a large antelope that's endemic to southern Africa, and it typically thrives in harsh and arid environments. They are perfectly adapted to these ecosystems, and in their natural habitat they take advantage of melons and cucumbers to get the water that they need. This means that if they were transported to another dry ecosystem in another part of the world then they could take over, and this is exactly what happened in New Mexico in the 1960s. Initially, 93 were introduced into the state for hunting purposes, but today they have an estimated population of around 3,000 to 6,000 individuals. Part of the reason that they have been so successful is because of the lack of large predators, because even though cougars will regularly target their young in the state, they are used to dealing with many more predators across their native range. If New Mexico still had a healthy jaguar population then things wouldn't be as bad, but instead Gemsbok are putting serious strains on the ecosystem. They often outcompete the native desert herbivores such as pronghorns, bighorn sheep and mule deer, so really a solution is needed in the future to stop them from completely taking over. Gemsbok males can reach a maximum weight of around 240 kilograms, meaning that they are larger than all of the reptile invaders, and this slots North America in at third place. Most of Oceania was separated from the rest of the world for millions of years, and this means that invaders from other parts of the world can have a massive effect on their ecosystems. In countries such as Australia and New Zealand, there have been many extinctions that have been caused by humans and invasive species, but most of the invaders that cause the biggest problems aren't giants. Cane toads, stoats and cats have decimated many of the native species, and these animals were introduced after Europeans arrived in this part of the world. In the 1900s, in New Zealand, many different species of deer were introduced, including the largest deer in the world, the moose. Most of the deer species are still around today, but the last confirmed sighting of a moose in New Zealand was in 1952. Before the large mammal introductions, the only native mammals on New Zealand were bats, so of course their presence massively changed the ecosystem immediately. 
Over the years, Australia has had its own massive mammal introductions, including the giant and formidable water buffaloes. Water buffaloes were first introduced into Australia in the early 1800s for farming purposes, but when some of the settlements that they were brought to were abandoned, they soon took over the nearby swampland. Because of the lack of large land predators in Australia, they soon took over, with only the saltwater crocodile being able to take down fully grown adults. In 2022, it was estimated that there were around 200,000 of them in the country, and their presence has led to habitat degradation and water pollution. The water buffalo is the largest invasive species in Oceania, but the species that has been introduced is a domesticated species, so it doesn't qualify for this video. If we head out of the swamps and into the more arid areas of Australia, you'll find the second largest invasive species, and it's another mammal with a massive population. Dromedary camels were introduced into Australia in the 19th century by the British, and they were used as beasts of burden to carry important equipment around. When motorised transport became more accessible in the region, then there was no need for the camels, and many of them were set free. By 2008, it was estimated that there were over a million camels in the country, and even after culling attempts, their numbers remained strong. This is bad news for the native animals and plants, as they haven't evolved with these giant desert animals so they are ill-equipped to deal with them. The dromedary camel has a maximum weight of around 690 kilograms, and this means that Oceania comes in at second place. Now I'm sure the final inclusion in this video isn't a surprise to many, as it's possibly one of the most famous invasive species stories in the world. I've covered this story countless times on the channel before, but if you're unaware, it all starts with a man called Pablo Escobar. He was a notorious and wildly successful drug lord, and he liked to spend his money in strange ways. He'd import animals from all over the world to keep on his estates, but after his death in 1993, some of his hippos that he had collected found their way into the wild. By 2007, these animals numbered around 16 individuals, but today their population is thought to number around 200. This is not only bad news for the native wildlife, but it's also dangerous for the local people as hippos are some of the most aggressive and unpredictable animals on this planet. There have been multiple attacks in Colombia over the years, and millions of dollars have been spent trying to find a way to deal with the problem. Some of the hippos have been shot and some have been sterilised, but they still manage to increase in number. There are no animals in South America apart from man that can take down a fully grown hippo, and transporting the entire population is almost impossible. It seems as though this is going to be an issue for many years to come, and the hippo is easily the largest invasive species in the world. Hippos can reach a maximum weight of around 3.2 metric tons, and this means that South America easily takes the top spot. As I said at the start of this video, this is an incredibly hard topic to research, so if you believe that I've missed out any animals, then feel free to let me know down below. But for now, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.